Welcome to the uh, 12th Man Rising podcast, The Seahawks Show. Kevin Daggett and I have done the show for a few years. This is our second show for 2018. And this week we're breaking down the offensive units and talking a little bit about the first preseason game that happens on Thursday and what we kind of hope to expect from that. But I'm Lee. Kevin is, is also on, I promise. Kevin, what do you think about uh, Dion Jordan? There's a chance that he may not uh, be ready for game one. Do you think he's going to be ready for game 16? Uh, he might have to be around for game 16, but <laughs> who knows? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not, uh, I'm not too concerned about Dion Jordan not being ready for the first preseason game, but well, they're talking about week one of the regular season may not be ready. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, that is- uh, that's we'll right. Uh, that's the problem, right? Is that this guy has been injured, or except for like one season, he's been injured his entire career, and then the Seahawks don't really have any kind of pass rush, really, except for Frank Clark, and taking some chances on guys like Deion Jordan, and and we all knew what kind of injury history Jordan had last year before the Seahawks signed him before the beginning of 2017, and then he plays what four games and he has five sacks. That sounds ridiculous, but he has five sacks in four games. But that's all I can play at the end of the year. So, I mean, you really have any high hopes that this guy's ever going to stay healthy enough to be a productive member of the Seahawks? Well, I don't, I don't think we can count on him to be a productive member. It's not, you know, you got to, you can't, you can't count on him to, to do much. You got to, you got to staff around him, but, um, he's productive when he's out there. It's just, he's not out there much. So, um, kind of a, kind of a catch 22, but what do you, you know, what do you do? <laughs> and you're right. We don't have much of a pass rush at all anymore. You know, we still got some, you know, pretty good linebackers and, you know, the defensive backfields and going to be a question mark too. And, you know, we'll see, uh, ironically, the, the offensive line is probably the most familiar, uh, faces on the team right now and <laughs> you know they weren't all that great last year but <laughs> right a lot of a lot of a lot of question marks yeah the thing is you remember when this team was really really good in 2012 13 14 i mean they didn't blitz their linebackers because they didn't have to they got enough pass rush with their front four whoever that you know michael bennett cliff averill um chris clemens there for a bit um where they didn't really have to do anything with the linebackers but now at this point and when you when you don't have to blitz the linebackers, you're not blitzing you know defensive backs as well, which they did a little bit more at the end of last year. Um, like Shaquille Griffin got a sack on a blitz, for instance. But you know when you're not having to blitz people and you can just put pressure on the quarterback with that front four, I mean it obviously helps the rest of the defense because they're not having to change position or be out. Pass rush, lack of pass rush, and lack. Really, really worries me to be honest. Because if you're using, and we have great linebackers, um, but you know, if you're using them to blitz more, they're taking people out of position. So I think this really hurts the defense. I, I don't know what they could have done differently. I mean, they they signed or they drafted Machine Green and Jacob Martin seems to be getting really good, you know, press so far in training camp. But we know what training camp means because Trayvon Boykin was MVP last year in the, through the first two preseason games. We know what happened with him. But I, I, I don't know. I mean, do you think the defense is going to be where, – where would you rank the defense? Do you think they're middle of the pack, middle of the league at this point going into 2018? <laughs> that's, a, that's a really good question because we don't even know what it's going to look like. And, you know, we talked last week about how, how simple the defense has been over the past few years because we had that good pass rush, solid linebackers, and a you know, good defensive backfield. Who knows what it's going to look like this year. And we, they probably are going to have to do more stunts and and you know, trickery and strategery on in the on the defense to, you know, to. I don't think you're going to be able to run that those basic packages anymore. But but we'll see. You know, who knows? They might be able to, but we really just don't know what um, what it's going to look like at this point. True. So Earl Thomas continues his uh, holdouts. Um, you know, I, I mentioned something about, well, I had something on 12th Man Rising about how Cam Chancellor actually came back to camp, even though he's not playing and, and showed up and maybe inspired some of the younger players to be like, oh, this guy left, but he still cares enough about the team to come back. Maybe we should care about the team, too. 
Um, it seems like, you know, and then somebody mentioned, well, you know, Cam held out too, which is right. I mean, did hold out for the first, missed the first two games a few years ago after a holdout contract dispute, just like Earl Thomas. And maybe Thomas is taking his cue from Cam when that happened. But, you know, I, I felt like when Cam came back, he he was kind of a different player, bought more in, even to the team. And, you know, I think him coming back and you saw the fans' reaction uh, yesterday or on Monday when the, when he showed up to camp and the fans were just like crazy, um, how much Cam means to, to the Seahawks fans and everything like that. What, what do you think about Thomas still holding out and, and Cam, you know, returning at least for, you know, he didn't talk to the press or anything because he doesn't have to because he's not a player, but... What, what do you think about Cam returning to camp? Any chance he actually ends up joining the coaching staff at some point in the next few years? Well, he's been a leader on the team for a number of years, and he's a hard-hitting player, and the fans love him, players love him. And, you know, he, he's really got nothing to lose by coming out and, you know, showing his face and you know nothing to lose and everything to gain and, you know, pumping up the younger players. I think it's great. I mean, it's uh, it's good for the fans. It's good for the players. Good for the coaches. And you know, he he probably would be a good coach one at some time. You know, as far as Thomas still holding out, I, you know, I, I this whole professional athlete thing is in their 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 contracts, which you know, I don't even know if they're really contracts. Nobody seems to hold up to them if they don't like them. It's you know, either way, they um, you know, the players seem to have try to hold all the cards in these things, but you know, the Seahawks have a history of not giving into these things. And, and, um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I just, I, I feel that these guys need to, to honor their contracts and show up to camp and try to, if you want to get something done, get it done on the outside, but you know, sh- be stand up and show up, show up to practice, show up to camp and say, Hey, I'm not happy with what's going on, but I'm going to honor my side of this thing. And hopefully we can get something done but I don't know. I'm not the player, you know, and this, and this stuff about, I mean, they got, God knows they got all the money in the world now, you know, and it's, <laughs> it's look, look out for yourself, but okay. If it's look out for yourself, what about the team? So, you know, I don't know. I think you should honor his contract, but again, that's me sitting on my, on my couch, um, <laughs> not making near the money they do. <laughs> so, right. Of course that's, that's part of it, right? I mean, you're sitting on your couch, not making near the money they do. And they're holding out. I mean, I know they have short, short careers, but players like Earl Thomas, um, you know, and I want him to make as much money as he can, just like any other human being, really. But, but you know, with the money he's making, you know, for even for this year, if he if he decides to retire after this year, the money that he has made in this career is much more than I'll ever make in my lifetime. So, you know, it's one of those things where. I agree with you. I mean, if you sign a contract a few years ago and you say, I'm going to play through 2018 and after that, then I'm, you know, I need to be extended or, or franchised or sign with another team. I mean, he made that agreement as well as the team. What happens, which this would never happen because it's illegal, but you know, if a player shows up to camp and the team's like, meh, we don't, we're not going to pay you. You know, I'm glad you're exactly. here. We're not going to pay you. Yeah. I mean, well, we're not going to honor that. We're not going to honor the last two years of your contract. We don't, you know, we don't think you've been, You've been doing well enough, so we're just gonna, you know, don't bother showing up to camp. We'll we'll let you know if we need you. Right, well, and it, to me, because you know the Seahawks have been one of these organizations, which makes me proud to be a fan of the Seahawks, and the fact that they have taken care of their their players. I mean, they knew Cam wasn't coming back at the end of last year. I mean, everybody mis- basically assumed it, and yet they still didn't release him when they could have, and they guaranteed twelve million dollars for him, be- even with his injury. They knew right. that. So, I mean, what that says about the organization to me is that they care about the, the players. So when Thomas is talking about blah, 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 I don't really, maybe with another team, I, I feel like that might be the case. I don't feel like it's that way with the Seahawks. I feel like he's, you know, he's doing a disservice to, to himself and, and as a leader. But, you know, I, I don't want to – I'm not in that locker room. Earl Thomas may be a leader, but he's not one of the guys I've ever thought of as – he's a leader. We knew Cam was a leader. Um, you knew, um, you know, Doug Baldwin is a leader, uh, Michael Bennett to some degree, probably Marshawn Lynch, uh, Russell Wilson, just cause he's the quarterback, but nobody ever really mentions, Oh, Earl Thomas is the leader. You know, he's just like, Oh, he's a great player, but nobody really talks about him. Oh, in the locker room, you know, he inspires, he's just not one of those guys. So I don't know. Maybe no, I'm, he's, I'm, he's not really a leader. He's, you know, he's a cheerleader. He's always there to hit guys on the head and say, you made a good hit and, you know, 
you know, kind of motivate guys in the field. But, yeah, I'm not sure he's the, the defensive leader on the team. Yeah, and now Bobby Wagner looks like they're trying to turn him into that. or And rightfully so. I mean, he's probably the best – well, he is the best defensive player they have. He, he may be the best player, period, on the team just as far as position and talent and, and what he does at his position. But, uh, you know, and, and, you know, being a leader, being vocal is not really his, has not been his style. And maybe he's just been overshadowed by Bennett and Cam and things like that. And this is his year to kind of break out. It'll be interesting to see because it's definitely a linebacker's defense at this point with he and KJ Wright. And heck, maybe even sure. Shaquem Griffin at this point. So uh, let's talk and break down the offensive units just, just a little bit heading into 2018. Some of these things we can assume, obviously, there's a little bit of play in the receiver and the depth at offensive line and maybe even fifth line, fifth running back if they have a fifth running back instead of a full back. But starting with the obvious one, the quarterback, Russell Wilson, and then uh, we hope that he continues to do the same thing he's done every year, which is play basically every down of every game, even injured. Um, but uh, Alex McKee and, and you know Austin Davis are battling it out for backup. We hope they never have to play, but Sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm, you know, a fan of, of a team with borrowed money because Wilson hasn't gotten hurt. We've been so lucky with that. You, would you trust either of these guys at this point to come in and, and lead the team to any kind of like, you know, if they played the entire year, would they go five and 11? Do you think they'd be worse than that or better than that? It would, it would be highly, highly questionable. And the main reason is, is because Russell, because, because of the way Russell Wilson is. I mean, he, he gets out of so many jams, and unfortunately, he has to get out of so many jams. Just like Austin and, Davis would. I'm just kidding. Yeah, exa- exactly. Um, so I don't, I don't know that they're, those, those guys have quite the finesse or uh, capabilities or skill set that Wilson has. So, you know, they might win a few games, uh, maybe against the, the Cardinals, but um, – you know, or the or the Browns if we play if we played the Browns, but um, yeah, I don't I don't have much. I, and I, but the thing is, you can't really. First of all, you're not going to get a, a quarterback who is going to be a starter or even a you know solid backup probably to come to Seattle because he's probably not going to play, and he knows that. <laughs> um, and how much money are you going to spend on your quarterback? You're, you're paying your quarterback a lot right now and, and you're going to have to pay him a lot more. Um, so, you know, how much, how much do you spend on a, on a backup quarterback at this point? So, well, you know, and, and there's uh, still the elephant in the room as far as, you know, if Wilson got injured early in the year, I mean, would you take a look at Colin Kaepernick? If he was, you know, if he would come back to play, Similar style and not a bad quarterback. I mean, would you trust him more than you would Austin Davis or Alex McKee? As an athlete, I love Colin Kaepernick. I mean, he, you know, the, all the the off the field stuff aside, I, I think Colin Kaepernick is a great athlete. I, I don't know what his football sense is nowadays because he hasn't played for so long. I don't know if he he's um, you know stayed in shape or anything like that. But I I. I like Colin Kaepernick physically, and I like him. I like him as a as a quarterback in the NFL. I do. I mean, I've never. I was afraid of him when he was a 49er. <laughs> um, you know, and, and even what was Richard Sherman's comment about him? He goes, he looks like he looks like he's slow, but he's running fast. He's one of the fastest quarterbacks out there, and and uh, you know he's hard to catch. So, um, yeah, I you know as far as a, a football player. Um, if he can still play, I have no, I have no, no problem with Kaepernick as a football player on the field. Right, and in the way the rules have changed as far as you know, quote unquote protest or whatever, he he would be limited probably in what he could do anyway. So, yeah. um, but yeah, you know, running back, I think you know, there's been a lot of there's a lot of ways to go with this. I think Pro Size makes the team, but I think he has to show he's he's healthy this year or he's gone. Uh, Chris Carson and Rashad Penny obviously make the team as one or two. Reverse it however you want to. Um, and Mike Davis probably makes it number four. J.D. McKissick has, you know, he he's the only running back to score a rushing touchdown last year. And I think he brings a lot of stuff, on, especially on third down. But one of those guys might be gone if they end up, you know, going with uh, uh, Trey Madden, for instance, at fullback because they really want to use a fullback. Brian Schottenheimer's used a fullback in the past. So, you know, if if you had five 
tailbacks, if you want to call them that nowadays, five tailbacks and one full back, or and and if you had full tail, four tailbacks and, and one fullback. Which of the tailbacks currently you think in the rotation for Seattle would you let go? That's a good question. I like Mike Davis. I mean, he's he's been a pretty consistent player when he's played. Um, and I know that the, the running back, it's such a huge question, Mark, because you have Carson, who we know can play if he's healthy, McKissick, who can play if he's healthy, um, Procise. You know, he's pretty good running back if he's healthy. So, uh, you know, what? and Penny, we don't know about him, but he's, you know, he was good in college, so he's, he's a big question mark. I mean, those are probably the four, but it's all a big question mark because can anybody stay healthy? Is Penny good? Um, you know, we've had a um, – over the past few years, we've had running backs who have come in and surprised us and played real well and, you know, blown the doors off things like, oh, this guy's the second coming – bam, knee goes out, done for the year. So it's it's been discouraging from a running back situation, especially coming off of Marshawn Lynch, who was so solid and seemingly unbreakable. And, uh, you know, now you got a bunch of guys that uh, I don't know what the deal is. They're, you know, they're <laughs> kind of China dolls back there. It's, you know, I mean, that not that that's what they are because they're getting hit hard. But, um, and I don't, you know, I don't know if it's the, the if there's that big of a difference from college to pro that they hit that much harder in, in the pros than they do in college, or if they're just trying hard. And, um, I just, I don't know, but I'd probably go with those four. But again, it's just, that's just a huge question mark of what's going to happen at, at running back. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, again, you hit on it. I mean, if you, they can stay healthy and if they get decent run blocking, um, you know, it's, it's funny because there's a stat the, the inside the 10 yard line last year, the Seahawks attempted to run it 20 times. Have you heard this stat mm-hmm. on this on those 20 within with rushes within the opposing team's 10 yard line? Guess how many yards the Seahawks gained on 20 rushes? Four yards. Negative three. Oh, jeez. <laughs> And they only ran it twenty times. That's, that's right, and that's that's the thing that struck me too. It was like okay, negative three, but it was like they only ran it twenty times. That's crazy. I mean, they, that's a running that's a running position on the field. I mean, that's, exactly. <laughs> well, maybe they just weren't in the ten. Maybe they, they weren't inside the ten that often. I know it was funny. Then and then the yards that they had within tw- the twenty, if you took out Russell Wilson, and it was crazy. It was trying to remember it was like a hundred and something but if you took out russell wilson and tyler lockett of all people it ended up being like the running backs gained like 40 yards on 20 something carries and it was like tyler lockett he, that's even him factoring in says something but uh you know that says maybe even more about the blocking than the running backs but i think this running back unit they have going into 2018 at least on paper is a lot more is a lot better has a lot more potential clearly than 2017 even though they had Thomas Rawls who's coming off injury you're not sure and Eddie Lacy who's trying to gain weight the whole time wasn't really sure I just feel a lot better about this younger seemingly faster unit uh, hopefully more versatility as well so we'll see the a receiver of course you have Baldwin you got Lockett and then at number three Seems like it's a battle between Brandon Marshall going to make the team, Jerron Brown going to make the team. You know, as far as who's going to be that number three guy, um, uh, who else is on? You got David Moore, you got Amara Darbo. Um, David Moore has done really well in camp, but again, it's camp, so who who really knows? Um, you, f- you feel confident with that receiving group they have going in at uh, this season, and do you have any hopes that Brandon Marshall, or do you even care if he makes the team or not? I like Brandon Marshall. I mean, he's he's a the good receiver. He's done. He's he. I mean, he was he's been injured lately, but um, you know, he seems he seems to have had his head on straight lately. I mean, he's got some. You know, he's admittedly has some some uh, some mental health issues, but he he knows it. And he's got a grasp on it, so that doesn't concern me. But you know, he's a he's a big receiver, and and. Um, I'd like to see him out there. It'd be a nice target the way Wilson throws the ball up there. But uh, Darbo, I mean, you know, Darbo, he's – he played pretty well last year. I mean, he, you know, he didn't get that many opportunities. But, um, you know, if Lockett can stay healthy, Lockett and Baldwin, we – if we can send those two down the field and, and uh, keep doing what we're doing with those guys, that'll 
I think we'll I think we'll be all right at receiver. Yeah, because the guy getting them the ball, hopefully, by, for the most part, and by that I mean, of course, Austin Davis um, is an excellent MVP type quarterback. So, um, tight end. Uh, I've seen one thing where Nick Vanek gets a projection actually could get cut, which seems crazy to me. Um, I don't. I don't think Nick Vanette's going to get cut. I think they have three three tight ends, and I think it's uh, Ed Dixon, Vanette, and Will Disley. Um, and I think Tyrone Swoops has has very little chance to make the team. Um, but I'm really excited about Disley just because of his his blocking ability. They want to get back to run a more run heavy offense. Maybe not run first, quote unquote, but more run heavy. I think he helps them out a ton. And in the Dixon signing, he has caught 60 balls. I don't expect him to catch. 40 balls for that matter uh, this season, but he has proven in the past that he can catch as well as block. Um, and Vanette was drafted to be a blocker. I don't know how he just probably hasn't played enough to really see what he can do, but what do you feel about that tight end group? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think that I don't see them cutting Vanette either. And um, I think, I think we'll be fine at tight end. I mean, it's not, it's, it's, they're going to need to block, I think, more this year, especially at the beginning, just till we see if that offensive line has got it straightened out and can do their job. Um, but you know, I guess you know, over the years, I guess we have we have relied on the on the tight end. I, you know, Jimmy Graham, yeah, he did all right, but I think I think everybody was expecting a lot more than we got out of him, you know, over the years. Um, so, but yeah, I think we I think they want to focus probably like you're right, focus on a uh, more run-oriented offense, so they need a good blocker in there. But I think the tight end, I think would be good at tight end. Yeah, I think the thing about the tight end group is, like I said, I think it really gets them back to what Pete Carroll wants to do, which is run the ball. And I, I thought the whole experiment with Jimmy Graham was a disservice to the team and to Jimmy Graham. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I don't think Jimmy Graham never tried. I think he became a better blocker. He was just never going to be a good blocker. Um, but, I, you know, I think he tried, and I, I don't – you know, as a person, I like Jimmy Graham. He seems like a nice enough guy. Um, it's just not a good fit, and it never was a good fit, and it, they needed to move on. So the offensive line, of course, you know, gets all kinds of uh, bad press. I, I personally think they, they will be better. I don't think they'll be top 10 unit, but I think they could be middle of the pack this year, especially with Dwayne Brown being there the entire season, uh, Ethan Posick being an offseason NFL offseason stronger, Justin Britt maybe a little bit better, I, I, you know, um, the, the guard, J.R. Sweezy, could easily start at guard. The, the big question mark to me is depth, of course, but then Jermaine Effetti, who, who got pulled in that mock game they had, what was it, on Sunday, I guess, and he, he had two penalties in that and got pulled. And so, you know, I kind of had high hopes that Mike Solari would would bring Effetti down, back, you know, get him to where he could be. Obviously, he's a first-round draft pick, had a ton of potential. I don't know if he'll ever be that good, but you know, just just at least getting him to kind of understand what's supposed to be happening on the offensive line because I think Tom Cable just confused him. But he doesn't seem like he's off to that good of a start. So if if I'm the Seahawks, I have an extremely quick leash on Effetti this year. If he starts the first few games making a, uh, you know, going back and, and committing penalties and setting the offense back, not only is he not, you know, starting – but I'm thinking about cutting him at that point because he's not helping the team. So you think the offensive line is going to be better this year, and, and if so, how much? They're going to they're going to have to be better um, than they were last year because it 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 just was not not a not a very good job. But uh, Effetti, they either need to find him a new sports psychologist or get him a sports psychologist or something i mean at least <laughs> give, give that a shot I've, i mean I, I, that was a big thing a few years ago i don't know if they still have those guys around but i, I don't yeah, know i mean you think about john smoltz for the braves remember he used one really i mean that was 30 years ago or whatever i mean they it seems like if you are really willing to buy into that that's not a bad idea actually yeah and i don't know you know what um what uh he might have some type of mental block. I mean, I don't know what the deal is, but I, I don't think that. Um, I think you're right. I think they got to do that. A short leash on him in the, in the practice game. <laughs> so I don't think they're going to uh, 
you know, take too many more, too many penalties from him. And, and you know that the refs are going to be watching him because he's got a history of that. You know, it's like <laughs> Bennett and his, and his offside penalties. They, they know Bennett goes, jumps and, and tries to jump um, the ball. And, and so they're watching him. So, you know, they're going to watch a Fetty. Um, Fluker, he'll probably get cut. Um, but I mean, they're, I think they're a little more, there's a little, little less, quite little, less question marks going into this year's offensive line than there were last year. Um, you know, a little more confidence in what we're doing. So, I mean, uh, you know, like you said, sweet, sweet, he's coming back. Hopefully he can stay healthy. Dwayne Brown. And then, um, Justin Britt at center, who did a, did a good job. I mean, he's done a good job at center and I think we finally found a position for him. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I think that's, that's all the offense. So, you know, just looking forward to tomorrow uh, versus the Colts. We know that the starters, you know, half of them probably won't play. The projected starters won't play. We know Baldwin's not going to play, for instance, and he doesn't need to. But he's being held out uh, because of a, a knee issue. He may not play all the preseason. But, again, I, I don't think that's a big deal as long as he and Russell have been playing together. But, um, you know, Wilson may play. may play a series or two or whatever. We're not going to see a whole lot of stuff. It's going to be a vanilla scheme. We're not going to see anything that's like, oh, this is what they're going to do in the regular season. But is there one or two players? Um, and, and I'll mention mine. I'm looking forward to seeing Trey Flowers out there to see what can what he can do. I'm looking forward to seeing what Fetty can do. You know, if he's, if he's out there for three series and doesn't commit a penalty, although maybe he should be out there longer just to get back into the swing of things. And I'm looking forward to afford to the young guy, especially Shaquem Griffin. I'm looking forward to see if what he does and Will Disley. Um, any players that and, – and I should say this. I'm super excited. This sounds ridiculous, but I'm super excited to see what they do with, with uh, Michael Dixon. Um, I, I want to see him punt, but I actually want to see if they actually do that, that drop kick. Um, do the, <laughs> which is ridiculous. I'm just – you know, it's preseason. Why not try it? But are there a few players you're looking forward to, to seeing? Yeah, I was going to mention Trey Flowers too, um, and and really just I, I did. Yeah, I'm not preseason's kind of a I don't I don't like watching it too much, but I will watch it just to see some of these young players and see them fight for positions. And and you know, there's there's always every year there's always a couple standouts on each team that that um, you know earn their spots in the preseason. And you know, hopefully we can get some of those guys, like you said, the you know grip the. Um, Shaquem Griffin and see you know see what he can do and some of these other defensive backs because there's a lot of uh, I think there's a lot of um, open positions in that defensive backfield and um, you know guys are guys are going to be fighting for those spots so it'll be be interesting to see yeah so uh, that's our show basically um, which you can find on you know Twelfth Man Rising uh, dot com part of fan sided network you can also check out coil entertainment network which is c-o-y-l um, which has several shows uh, including a movie show that's fantastic i hear um, but you can find the, the seahawks show on that as well um, and i you know it'll be interesting to see where we stand next week when we when we do this podcast to see what's come out of that first preseason game um, if anything, but, you know, I remember last year when we did, you know, we we're talking about Trayvon Boykin and just, oh, how phenomenal. And he's, you know, and then it's like, no, but uh, I appreciate uh, Kevin as always being on. So uh, I think we'll go back to how we did it the previous seasons and let Kevin have the, the last couple of words. Right on, man. Let's uh, go see if the Hawks can uh, have a good preseason, although it really doesn't matter. I think the what the year we won the Super Bowl, didn't we go 0-4 in the preseason or something like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess it doesn't really matter, but just as long as nobody gets hurt. And uh, go Hawks. 